So we got the Sarcomere, mm -hmm. smallest unit. A bunch of Sarcomeres in series is a myofibril. You can think of that sort of as like a string of spaghetti. You have a bunch of those strings of spaghetti wrapped in a burrito okay. that make up a muscle fiber. And that's the so muscle that's cell. So that's one muscle cell. Yep multiplied by a bunch yep. you can think of that as a mega burrito a bunch of burritos Ooh. yeah exactly we're yeah. getting good at disgusting nobody's oh, yeah. gonna eat that thing it's just Spaghetti a bunch of noodles burrito. and yeah exactly but the mega burrito is the fascicle and then a bunch of fascicles would be a mega mega burrito that's whole muscle there are again two extremes in the exercise uh science peripheral community mm -hmm for this topic. I'll illustrate both of them to you and then you let, let me know which one's actually closer to the truth slash maybe somewhere in the middle. One extreme will basically say, yes, some research has shown that muscles uh, at a stretched position or at a lengthened position do grow better, but it hasn't been every muscle in the human body. And so it is premature and unscientific for us to assume that muscles getting more growth when more tension is applied to them at longer muscle lengths is a near universal or universal truth for how skeletal muscles operate and grow. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, there is another perspective that says, look, like we have three to five muscles already studied, most with multiple studies. Most of these muscles are quite disparate in architecture. The biceps and the quads don't super have a lot in common if you look at the muscle just by itself. Mm. Like those, that's really different. The pination angles are weird. Uh, super, super different stuff. And in almost every case, with only neutral results being the exception and not the other way around results, longer muscle lengths do tend to promote more hypertrophy. So at this point, saying Look, it's probably true for all muscles is a much more confident assertion than either it's not true for all muscles, for which we have no direct evidence, or the even the assertion of uh, kind of like a false neutrality. Well, we just don't know. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, if you meet, you know, I was going to, this is, a, I was actually, this analogy would be wrong, but like, I'll just go with it. Fuck it. If you meet like 18 guys named Chad, and they're all douchebags. You meet 19th Chad and someone's like, hey, is this guy cool? You haven't talked to him yet. You're like, I'm going to guess he's not because I've never met a single cool Chad. Look, if you're out there, your name is Chad. Don't be a douchebag. I'm kidding. But if you're a douchebag, you take that joke all wrong anyway. What do you think about the situation? Yeah. So I think some people try to be scientific to a fault, which is what you're <laughs> describing, where it's like, listen, my ex-girlfriend told me that. <laughs> so what were, what were you doing? We're trying to get it. <laughs> I approached physical romance as a technical endeavor. Mm. Turns out the light microscope down there was not a turn on. Perfect. Yeah. That but I saw all kinds of stuff. Terrible. Man. Okay. Nightmare so, shit. All right. So <laughs> it's terrible. So, <laughs> no. Amoebas and shit, bro. I'm kidding. That, that joke went way too far. All right. <laughs> I forgot where. No, I'm just kidding. So yeah. Lengthen position I'll, I'll, training. Uh, the I genital think. likes look enormous in a light microscope, like giant carnivorous crabs. I would imagine that's true. I've only looked at muscle cells under a microscope. <laughs> Nonsense. But, Come on. But no, you're just lying. I don't you're know. I've, got, I've gotten some there. urges, but I was around when they bought it. <laughs> and see. it's very expen <laughs> expensive. I didn't, I didn't want to do you, anything. Your PI brings you in there. I'm like, Daniel, I don't know how else to say this. Did you put genital lice under the light microscope? You're like, I've done a lot of bad things. <laughs> I think that one would get me canned. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's science. He does like me. So, nice. But yeah, I think that one might might get me the boot. So I'll, I'll hold off on that Excellent. recommendation from you. Give it some thought. Don't write it off. Okay. All right. Actual answer. <laughs> yes. Actual answer. I think this one is interesting only because... So I'll, I'll say my stance. I think that it will continue to show that if you put a muscle in the length and position for most muscles, it will continue to show more gains in that position, at least neutral to positive. And, mm -hmm. and the reason why I'm fine with making the recommendation is because that neutral is in there too. And if you're going to do something and you're going to get neutral to positive gains, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take that bet every single time. Right. So oftentimes, if you look at even the speculation, the speculation is still neutral to positive like oh it won't matter well if something doesn't matter and this is what we were talking about previously where 
if something doesn't matter or studies show mm-hmm. that it doesn't matter some and some mm-hmm. show that's positive, mm-hmm. I'm always going to bet on doing the thing that had a signal toward positive because right. there's not a distinct downside. Right. right? It's, it's like it's going training. to the casino, a weird, weird casino where someone's like, okay, you can't lose. You might not win. You'll lose nothing, but you might also win. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to bet every single time. Like who doesn't do that? Yeah. So one interesting thing, and this is, I would consider to be a hypothesis, Mm -hmm. you know, a a low, not necessarily an extremely well-reasoned hypothesis, but a hypothesis is that there's certain muscles that increase in length in a way that will, and pennated, pennated muscles all fall into this category, that will increase in length. So fascicle length increases and that fascicle length increase will manifest in a cross-sectional area increase. So there's been some modeling research where they basically showed Hornberger recently put out a paper, and I think there's others that followed. And this isn't direct measurements, by the way. It is modeling. So the assumptions based on the geometry tell us that. And the geometry makes sense in that if you have a pennated muscle and that pennation continues downward, let's say it ends here, and then now I got a little bit more length in that fascicle, Mm -hmm. if I measure a cross that's going to be an increase in cross-sectional area and increase in thickness. So that's the purpose of pennation from an evolutionary perspective is to jam more muscle into the same volume. Yeah, exactly. So, but an increase in fascicle length is actually not going to allow you to increase in force. It actually does more for shortening velocity, Mm -hmm. but that increase in length is still going to manifest in hypertrophy. It's it's more mm-hmm. tissue, right? So mm-hmm. you can measure an increase in cross-sectional area theoretically when you get that increase in fascicle length. And there's some speculation that, and I don't think this is necessarily well-founded, that fascicle length increases will plateau much more quickly than hypertrophy, normal radial hypertrophy increases. So an increase in the sarcomeres in parallel versus sarcomeres in series. So it's possible, and I consider this very, very, very speculative, but if the time course of increases in fascicle length is short, then you could potentially see a world where those untrained subjects receiving more growth from those lengthened positions is because of the fact that they got some adaptations that were related to increases in fascicle length. But there's a lot of layers to this that makes me question. So one, you have to draw the conclusion or you have to make the assumption that all of the increase, all of the differences, which were pretty large in many of these studies, came from an increase in fascicle length. And those, and I think that is, you know, one, possible, one, but, possible unlikely. but unlikely. Uh-huh. Then two, you have to also, I think, make the case that the increases in strength that you see even at shortened positions. Yes, yeah, so you wouldn't get them from fascial length increases. Yeah, exactly. Parallel so, doesn't increase strength. Uh, or sorry, series doesn't increase strength. Yeah, parallel does. Exactly. So you'd have to say, oh, all of the all of the increases in strength in the shortened position are coming from you know neural increases, and when we see them, that just seems unlikely. Uh, it just as sounds well. like excuse. City. Yeah, exactly. You're just trying to caricature a situation. It's incrementally more unlikely with every exactly. single exactly. caveat you, you put exactly. in there. Exactly, yeah. and then you have to assume that the fascicle length increases will truly plateau quickly where there's mixed evidence on this where in trained individuals and athletes and so on, you still see fairly robust increases yes. in fascicle length. Also, increasing fascicle length on a net aggregate will actually allow your muscle to become a quote unquote longer. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially when a lot of the research shows that much of the hypertrophy in the lengthened position, not uh, shouldn't have said much a good degree of the hypertrophy is in the distal portion of a muscle kind of towards the end Mm -hmm. having like a longer and thicker distal quad tricep bicep every muscle i can think of damn near lat is like that's what makes the muscle aesthetically look just much better you want you know there's a thing in bodybuilding where some people have like short muscles 
uh, in their physique. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good look because it just looks like your muscle doesn't occupy all the space that it could there. But longer muscles typically just look better. So even if someone said, okay, this is mostly fascicle length mediated, you're not getting kind of side to side growth, you're getting basically lengthening growth, but like, I'll take that shit too, Mm -hmm. God damn it. We used to think it was impossible to make Mm -hmm. muscles longer meaningfully. Mm -hmm. Now we know it is possible. Like maybe it's a total different type of hypertrophy, fine, but like, Motherfucker, there's still money in the bank. I'll take it. Yeah, Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. For sure. You've put in the work over the years, and you've made good gains. But now you're ready to create your most impressive physique ever. And the RPI Hypertrophy app is designed to make this possible. You can customize every single aspect of your training plan, or let the app's AI take the lead. Whichever combination you use, your results will climb higher than ever. All you have to do is bring the effort. Click on the link in the description of this video to get started. And then the last point I'll make, which I think is a fascinating one, but may not apply to all muscles, but it definitely applies to some because we've seen it measured, is that it doesn't have to necessarily even be the fascicle itself that's getting longer if you make the assumption that length and training is increasing fiber length. So if we go through, so it kind of necessitates us to go through what the structure of muscle is like. So if you're willing, I can I can yeah. go up the, so basically you have sarcomere right so that's the smallest contractile unit yep. there's a bunch of so the thick and thin filament the myosin head is like a rod which looks like a red ball sack on top and excellent i've gra- never heard that before grab, but accurate grabs onto a pearl and it and it pulls the two halves together and scott that's what, <laughs> has your ball sack ever grabbed anything <laughs> well, he's, i think that's he confirmed that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So we got the sarcomere, mm-hmm. the smallest unit. A bunch of sarcomeres in series is a myofibril. Yes. Right? So you can think of that sort of as like a string of spaghetti, right? Yep. Then you have a bunch of those strings of spaghetti wrapped in a burrito okay. that make up a muscle fiber. And that's the so muscle that's cell. So that's one muscle cell. Yep. Exactly. And then that one muscle cell multiplied by a bunch yep. is going to be a fascicle so a bundle so you can think of that as a mega burrito a bunch of burritos Ooh, yeah exactly we're yeah. getting good at disgusting nobody's oh, yeah. going to eat that thing it's just Spaghetti a bunch of noodles burrito. and yeah exactly but the mega burrito is the fascicle and then a bunch of fascicles would be a mega mega burrito that's whole muscle but the thing that you need to sort of grasp within this analogy is that the burrito the muscle fiber itself doesn't necessarily span the mega burrito so you could have it almost never does I think it's true for, so for penated muscles, I think there's more spanning, but there's a bunch of muscles that have been shown and some that it's kind of murky. So for the hamstrings, I couldn't find very good evidence, even though they're, they're pretty long muscles, but it's definitely true for the sartorius, a bunch of, I was going to say, there's like an, uh, potentially like an 18 centimeter long cell in there. Yeah, so it's very rare yeah. because of the fact that it has a bunch of fibers within the fascicle. Yes. So I think there's an inverse relationship between the length of the muscle and the amount of fibers it has that span. So basically, you're going to have a lot more small fibers in very long muscles yes. because of the fact that, and this is somewhat speculation on the researcher's part from a why is this occurring standpoint, mm-hmm. but it seems like when you have a really long muscle, in order for that signal to propagate through that long muscle from the neuromuscular junction it takes a while. So instead, you have a bunch of muscles that are sort of staggered, a bunch yes. of fibers that are staggered yes. that allows you to contract a lot more quickly. So yes. it's more of a speed thing yes. that allows... That makes perfect sense. Yeah, and to me, that seemed like really palatable. So we got the sartorius, we got the gracilis, we got some ab muscles. We have, I believe one other muscle that's not coming to mind but there, it's definitely a phenomenon that has been measured in in a few different ways which muscles it applies to i think is still somewhat up in the air in terms of some of the more pennied mu- pennied muscles because of the fact that it's really hard to do some of these techniques you have to digest the whole muscle you have sure. to slowly tweeze those fibers oh out my and god so, on. so the amount of samples that you you even get with some of the data in the hamstring which you know is i think kind of equivocal uh makes me pause because of the fact that you're not sampling that many fibers sure yeah so. sure it could be biased there so overall you would say it's probably a more confident assumption that 
if any muscle you train, if you can apply more tension and lengthen position, and if you can pre-stretch that muscle to get most of the muscle more lengthened or all of it, that's a better bet with probably no downsides other than like taking entire exercises and excluding them because they don't function like that than it is to say, look, for the muscle studied, yes, the whole stretch thing applies. But for all the muscles we haven't studied, we just there's just one giant question mark. We just don't know. Mm, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a fair characterization. I would put it into the category of so you've seen sort of me go through the layers of the whole vascular thing. And I just don't I don't buy it just yet. So I, what I consider it is more along the lines of it is one very likely to be neutral or positive. So I'm going to hedge that direction. And two, I'm going to say that. Sure, as a scientist, it's an unknown unknown because we haven't seen the studies in the trained individuals yet. We see a couple, and this is something that I think is important too, just because let's say you have 15 studies in untrained. You don't need to do 15 studies in train. You right. see a couple that trend in that direction. You're like, all right, this phenomena can cross over between sure. those camps. Sure. So. And we know that uh, because almost all other phenomena have crossed over. Mm -hmm. So we say, okay, this is crossing over. It's kind of like, all right, this mm -hmm. is a thing. Thank you.